determined by storing the basic aspiration of a human being. So we can see by verifying for oneself that each one of us basically aspires to be happy and prosperous. And that also in continuity. Isn't it? Now when I go to explore happiness and prosperity, I can see that there are three basic requirements to ensure a happy and prosperous life for me. One, which is physical facility, which is required for my body. But more important than physical facility is relationship. If you look into our families, we can see that most of the problems in our families are not due to lack of physical facility. They are due to lack of relationship. So we can see that relationship holds a higher priority over physical facilities as a human being for us. And if I have to fulfill relationship, then I need to have right understanding of relationship. Because I need to be sure for myself what feelings are there which are naturally acceptable to me. When I live by them, I am happy. When I share them, the other is happy. Similarly, with right understanding only, I can make out what physical facility is required and how much of it is required, isn't it? So when I have the right understanding, then I am able to fulfill the relationship and then it leads to mutual happiness. Similarly, by having the right understanding of physical facility, I can make out my needs correctly and I can also make out my own nature correctly so that I am feeling prosperous within and I am able to enrich the nature also. So as a human being, we require all the three, right understanding in the self, relationship with human being and physical facility with the rest of nature and that also be the correct priority. And if I am able to fulfill all these three, nothing else is required as a human being. And in education, what we are doing currently, we are primarily focusing on physical facility, leaving aside the right understanding in the relationship. So when you go to explore the right understanding, you can see that I need to ensure harmony in my life, in all my expanse of living, as a human being, as a family member, as a part of society, in the nature and existence. So the basic task, at all levels of my living. When I understand this correctly, then I am educated. Similarly, I live by them and I am having the sanskar. And when I live at all these levels in harmony, I need to learn the skills. Isn't it? So education has two components, values and skills. And value holds a higher priority because that ensures the right understanding. It is followed by skills. Now, if you look at the complete expanse of this, then we get a holistic vision with this understanding. When I have the right understanding in the self at all levels of my living, then I am able to ensure justice in my relationship and my sense of family grows. When I understand the relationship, I can see that it's not only my spouse and children with whom I am related. I am related to every human being on this planet. So I am able to have a vision of family right from the individual family to the world family. And when I ensure this in my living, I am a part of undivided society. I am a pillar of undivided society. Similarly, by understanding within me harmony in totality, I am able to see the orderliness right from family to the world family. So I am able to fulfill the needs of my family. At the same time, I am participating in fulfilling the needs of every family with that feeling of relationship, with that understanding of order. So I am participating in the universal human order. And this is living with human consciousness. And the role of education is to ensure this transformation. While the education is largely focused on physical facilities currently, we need to ensure this transformation through formal education in the whole expanse of my living. This is the expectation and then only we can say that we are developing holistically. Just growing of physical facilities is not development. The development is holistic when all the three are being ensured. And this is something which is to be ensured at the level of nation, at the level of world, through education. Now, going by that, we started exploring the harmony at various levels. We started by exploring the harmony at human being and we said that whatever is being said here in this workshop is a proposal, no need to assume it to be true or false. So there is no requirement for agreement or disagreement. The basic task is to verify. So whatever is being said here is a proposal for each one of us. I need to verify. When I go to verify, then I see that there is something called as natural acceptance in me. Whenever I refer any proposal to my natural acceptance, I get very genuine answers. For example, if I ask you, what is naturally acceptable to you? Feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? And we get a very simple answer, feeling of relationship. I may be living in opposition with so many, but still what is acceptable to me you know, at the level of natural acceptance is feeling of relationship. Similarly, when I go to experientially validate it in my family, in my organization, in the society around, 
I am able to see that when I leave this feeling of relationship, it ensures mutual happiness. Similar thing can be observed for the rest of nature also. When I am able to see myself related to the nature, I am able to ensure the enrichment of nature, ensure the prosperity in my family. And when I am able to verify on both these grounds, it is acceptable to me within and I am also able to experience it in my life. It becomes a part of my right understanding. Then I am left with no options other than this. I am able to see that this is what I really want to be. This is what a fulfilling life is. So the whole task is to see everything that is being said as a proposal and verify on these two grounds. It may take some time, but the process has to begin. We are also able to see that this basic aspiration of happiness and prosperity. Now I can see this happiness is to be in a state of harmony. So presently when we go to explore happiness, we feel that everybody's happiness may be different. But when I verify at the level of my natural acceptance, I can see that it is essentially a state of harmony that I am aspiring for. I want harmony within me, in my thoughts, in my desires, in my expectations. I want harmony in my relations, in my interactions. So happiness essentially is the state of harmony. And prosperity is the feeling of having a condition more than required physical facility. So prosperity and wealth are two different things. I may be having accumulation of lot of wealth, but I may not feel prosperous unless I understand my needs correctly. So when I am able to make out my needs correctly, then I am able to say that this is more than what I require. So one important element is to make out my needs for physical facilities correctly. Then only I can feel prosperous. Now how to do that? So we go to explore myself as a human being. And then I can see that I am coexistent, I am coexisting with my body. As a human being, these two realities are there, self and body. I am the self, the body is there with me. And how to make out the difference of the two and the coexistence of the two? So I start by recognizing the need. So I see that my needs are completely different from needs of the body. My need is continuous in time. Say happiness, respect. I want happiness every moment. I want respect every moment. But the body needs food, clothes, shelter. Now my needs are continuous while the needs of the body are temporary. Similarly, my needs are qualitative. They are in the form of feeling. They cannot be quantified. But look at the body, every need of the body is quantifiable and that is also required in a limited quantity. Now the needs of the body are fulfilled by physiochemical things, but my needs are fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling. So one important takeaway from this discussion is that I can see for myself that happiness is not the same as physical facility. Happiness is something innate to me and that is to be ensured by right understanding and right feeling. Working as an instrument which requires physical facilities. Similarly, I can see that my activities are completely different from the activities of the body. The activities of the body are physiochemical, while my activities are sentient, like desire, thought, expectation. They are all continuous in time, while the activities of the body are temporary in time. We can go further to observe the response of the body and the cell. So I can see that the body is there just recognizing and fulfilling. Whatever I acknowledge as need for the body, I do accordingly and the body recognizes and fulfills. But whatever I decide is based on my assuming. My selection is based on my assuming. My choices are based on my assuming. So if the assuming is without knowing, then I am in trouble. If my assuming is based on knowing, then I am in harmony. So the whole task is to ensure this knowing so that the assuming gets definite and my recognizing and fulfilling gets definite. So this is the world of the world of material, the two are coexisting to you know, be a human being and I need to fulfill both the needs. Now further I go to explore myself so I can see that this sentient entity, conscious entity self has some activities going on all the time and there is desire in the self, thought in the self, expectation in the self and these all make together the content of imagination. I am imagining all the time, some desire is there, some thought is there, some expectation is there and can have three sources. One source could be preconditioning, something that I have assumed for myself without knowing. Another source could be sensation, the information that I get from the body, from the sense organs. And I may aspire to be happy through preconditioning or through sensation, but that is enslavement because there is neither continuity here nor definiteness here. As if there is dependence outside. Here also, if I try to derive happiness out of sensation, it is enslavement because there is neither definiteness nor continuity. 
and there is dependence outside. But I am able to ensure this very innate source of mind, which is the natural acceptance. And my imagination is guided by natural acceptance that I am self-organized. But we see that in general, you know, what we are doing right now, a large part of our imagination is dictated by preconditioning or sensation. And a very small part is coming from natural acceptance. And this is the whole problem in life. I am enslaved because I am dictated by preconditioning and sensation. And then I am unhappy, I am deprived. So the task is to ensure this right understanding through education so that the complete content of imagination is guided by right understanding. So that I am competent. I am what I really want to be. The whole problem is that I am not the way I really want to be. So my natural acceptance is on one side, but my being is on the other side. And there is a difference between the two. There is a wide gap between the two. And as a human being, I am in problems. So what we really aspire is to have the complete imagination guided by right understanding. And this is the goal of education. Education can enable this. So. With this, I am able to ensure happiness in continuity. Now with that, we can further understand our coexistence with the body. So I can see that I am exchanging information with the body. And the body is my instrument. Now I can see that when the body is my instrument, I am not the same as body. I become responsible to the body for ensuring the right understanding, right feeling in me. Now when I go to become responsible, I uh, ensure physical facility from the for the body. And there are three purposes for the physical facility. One is to nurture the body, the other is to protect the body, and the third is to rightly utilize the body. For nurturing the body, food is required. For protecting the body, clothes and shelter are required. For rightly utilizing, instruments are required. And they are all limited in quantity. Now, when I am able to see this limitedness of the physical facility required for the body, I feel prosperous. When I see that I have more than what I require. And a natural outcome is the health. Now this has become an important challenge today because people are not able to see the body as an instrument of the self. Assuming oneself as the body, they are spoiling the body, destroying the body and they are also not able to feel prosperous. So one major takeaway from this whole thing is that I feel prosperous when I am able to recognize the need for physical facility correctly and I am able to see that yes, I have enough. So two important components, one is the identification of the required physical facility and the second is ensuring availability. The mark of Digitalization, nurturing the other. But if that is not the case, I feel like accumulating more and more, exploiting the others. Now with this, I can also see the program for my health. So I can see that these four programs are there. The basic task is to ensure the right intake and routine for the body. With that, I also need to ensure labor. If I ensure intake, routine and labor with the feeling of self-regulation, I am naturally healthy. To Sizes, I can go for postures, I can go for regulated breathing, that will also ensure health. But if that is not ensured, I may go for medicine and treatment at times. So this is my harmony with the body, which I am able to see. Now with that, we go to explore the harmony in the family. Now, when I talk about family, it is basic about, basically about relationship. So I can see that the relationship is very much there, whether I acknowledge it or not. And the relationship is there between one self and the other self. And where there is relationship, there are feelings in one self or the other self. These feelings are very much definite. And that's how we can discuss them, define them, elaborate on them, explore them, understand them. So when I list out the feelings, these are nine feelings which are very basic to every relationship. Trust, respect, affection, care, guidance, reverence, glory, gratitude and love. And the body is just an instrument in expressing them. So when I fulfill these feelings in my living, then I evaluate the other, the other evaluates me, I evaluate myself, the other also evaluates oneself. And that is the mutual happiness. And this is what we aspire for in every relationship, every moment. But for that, I have to do homework of understanding the feelings and ensuring the feelings in my living. Now, the trust is the foundational value because with trust only the relationship starts. So what is trust if you see? So with that, we went to explore what is trust. So the trust is the assurance, assurance that the other wants to make me happy. But how to see this? It's not the task of assuming. So to see this clearly, we can ask certain questions. So I can ask for myself whether I want to make myself happy or not. So I get an answer, yes, I want to make myself happy. How about the other? I want to make the other happy? Yes. 
Does the other also want to become happy? Yes. But when I ask myself whether the other wants to make me happy, there is a question mark there. And that is the whole crisis. <laughs> but when I look at the competence part, the intention part, I can see that I am neither competent enough nor the other is competent enough. I am myself unhappy. I am making others unhappy. The other is also unhappy. The other is making me also unhappy. But that is something to do with the competence, not the intention. The intention is pure. In fact, this question 4a is a reflection of question 2a. When I say that I want to make the other happy, the same thing holds true for the other also. But I am not able to see this very naturally in my relations. That's why we get irritated, angry, anxious, opposed, we start taking revenge and so many things. That is nearly required as a question mark here. So the important takeaway from this discussion is that I am able to put a tick mark here. And not at the level of thought, at the level of feeling, at the level of understanding. With that, I am able to rightly evaluate myself and the other. So I am also preconditioned, I am also dictated by sensation and I also am sometimes guided by natural acceptance. The same thing holds true for the other. So when I rightly evaluate, I can see that there are three things in which every human being is similar. Our intention, our purpose, our natural acceptance is the same. Our program to become happy is also the same. And we have the potential to ensure that because I am also endowed with the same activities which the other is endowed with. So with that, I am able to see that the other is similar to me. So where does the difference lie? It only lies at the level of competence. So on the basis of right evaluation of our mutual competence, I can see the complementarity. I may be more competent, the other may be more competent. These are two possibilities. So if I have more understanding, then I am responsible to the other. I become responsible to the other. I live unconditionally, unperturbed by the behavior of the other. And then I feel committed to facilitate the understanding in the other. But if the other has more understanding, is more responsible than me, then I am committed to understand from the other. So this is the fulfillment of relationship in every relationship. This is what we need to do in every relationship. I need to develop my competence. I need to develop others' competence. And the same thing holds true for the other also. So this is something that we have been discussing so far. With that, we went on to discuss further feelings about affection, care, guidance, and then we go on to discuss society, nature, existence. So this is all about the content that we have been discussing.